Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and today I want to talk about baiting swarm traps. What you can do to add smells to your swarm traps that will make them more attractive to honeybee swarms. So this is the second in a series of videos on honeybee swarm trapping. The first video dealt with what bees are looking for when they select a new home, as well as uh, looking at the different types of traps and listing some pros and cons of those. So if you miss that video, I would strongly encourage you to go back and watch that before you watch this one. I'll, I'll leave a link to it up here as well as in the description below. So to understand what makes a swarm trap more attractive to honeybees, I'm gonna point you back to some work by Dr. Thomas Seeley. The first is a book called Honeybee Democracy. And the second is a free publication that you can download from Cornell University, also by Dr. Seeley, called Bait Hives for Honeybees. I'll leave links to both of these below. They're, they're really, really, really valuable. If you don't have a copy of Bait Hives for Honeybees, it's a free PDF. You, you really need to get a copy of that. So if you read some of Dr. Seeley's work, such as Honeybee Democracy, then you'll begin to understand that the suitableness of the cavity the swarm selects to move into plays a huge role in the overall survival of that colony. Not only that, but there is a pretty small amount of cavities in the wild that are suitable for honeybees. There are only so many trees that have cavities, and of those, there are only so many that have cavities of the right size with the entrance in the right location, the entrance of the right size, and the trees in the right location. All the variables that the bees are looking for, there's, there's not that many houses out there for them to find. Add to this the transient nature of a honeybee colony. You know, as, as humans, we tend to think of lifetimes as multiple decades. Um, if you're a farmer with cattle, you think of a cow's lifespan as, you know, 10, 15 years. Honeybees, a worker may live six weeks in the summer. A queen may live two to five years if things are good. A feral colony in the wild may persist for three to five years, maybe longer, but eventually that colony is going to misfire on a queen replacement, or they will be overrun by varroa, or they'll have a particularly hard winter, and that colony is going to perish. So to summarize, there's really three points that I want to make, and that is, there aren't that many tree cavities out in the wild that are suitable for a colony to move into. Number two, the suitableness of that tree cavity had, plays a huge role in the survival of the honeybees. And number three, those colonies are going to perish over time anyway, and that occupied cavity will become vacant. And this is where bee smell comes in. Scout bees from a swarm are intensely attracted to bee smell because they want to find a suitable cavity. And the surest way to find a suitable cavity is to find a cavity that has been lived in by honeybees, where a colony was successful and then due to natural attrition, they perished. So this means that bee smell is really the fundamental key to attracting honeybees to your swarm trap. So let's move over to the bench here and we'll talk about the different types of bee smell and how they can be used in a swarm trap. So there's really six types of bee smells that I wanna talk about today. And the first one is comb. And when you talk about comb, there's really two types. You've got honeycomb and you've got brood comb. Uh, honeycomb is usually nice and light and uniform. Brood comb gets darker and darker and darker with age. So bees find comb very attractive. And I'll reference honeybee democracy again here. I took some notes to shorten this up some. So most wild colonies will require about 100,000 cells of honeycomb. And it takes about 16 pounds of honey for them to make that much wax. That is about half the amount of honey that a swarm or colony needs to survive its first winter. So if you do the math here, if a swarm moves into a cavity that does not have any comb at all, it needs to get 16 pounds of honey to build the comb, and then it has to go out and collect 30 or 32 pounds of honey to fill that comb. Whereas if a swarm moves into a colony that already has comb in it, all they have to do is go out and get the 32 pounds of honey. So it's much less work for them and a much better chance of survival especially if it's a drought year or a year without a strong nectar flow. So both 
honeycomb and brood comb are useful to bees, I believe that brood comb might be more attractive simply because it has more bee smell. There's pheromones and all that brood smell in there uh, that will interest the bees. The problem with brood comb is if there is bee bread or pollen or anything left in it, those proteins are extremely attractive to wax moths. You also have to be concerned with brood comb, especially spreading disease. Uh, spores such as American fowl brood and things like that can be harbored in the wooden ware and in the comb and spread disease from colony to colony. So it may be illegal in some areas to use brood comb inside a swarm trap. The next step in this is if you have comb that you can use, how do you use it inside a swarm trap? So I'll show you what I would do here. So all I'm doing here is putting in nine frames with heavy waxed plastic foundation. I'll take the 10th frame, which is a, a partially drawn honeycomb frame and drop it in the middle. Close this up and that's how I would use honeycomb in a swarm trap. So the brood comb I, I've got here is not in very good shape. This is on wired wax foundation, which I don't use anymore. I prefer plastic. And um, this is not something that I'd want the bees to repair and rebuild. Besides that, this is very valuable. I think I can catch multiple swarms with this one frame of old brood comb. So what I'm going to do is actually pop the comb out of this frame All right, so now I've got some chunks of brood comb. And I, what I would do is just take a chunk of brood comb like that, drop it down in the bottom, add my 10th clean frame in, and then close it up. The second bee smell that I want to talk about is wax. So obviously wax and comb are closely related because comb is made from wax, but comb is more usable to bees than wax is by itself. But wax plays a big part, in my opinion, in overcoming the new lumber smell. And to understand this, I'm gonna point you back to the publication Bait Hives for Honeybees from Dr. Tom Seeley. Several pages back in this publication, he's got a section on recommendations for bait hive design. And number 11 says, type of wood, various types acceptable, many types of trees have been occupied. Bees may avoid new lumber. Now, I started last year with no old equipment. I had all new equipment, I made all my swarm traps, and I had five swarm traps, all made with new lumber. I caught seven swarms out of those swarm traps. And I can't prove this, but I think in large part it was because I painted melted beeswax on the inside of my swarm boxes. I'll show you how I did that. So here I've just got a turkey roaster with some melted beeswax in it. And this is nothing but a little wire stand I made to keep the paint roller from falling down in the wax. But four inch paint roller, basically you just roll melted wax in the box. I don't think you have to cover this perfectly. You just need to get a good healthy amount of wax in here. So now a lot of the new lumber smell, I believe has been overcome and this box is going to be more attractive to honeybees. 
So the next type of bee smell I want to talk about is propolis. And propolis is the sticky substance that bees make from tree sap. And uh, they use that to glue the parts of the hive together. Propolis is also a disinfectant, and it, research is beginning to show that it acts as part of the immune system of the hive. So bees find that smell very attractive, and I don't specifically collect propolis and use it in swarm traps, but I do know other beekeepers are very successful in collecting propolis and making a tincture uh, by diluting it in alcohol and then painting it on the inside of the swarm traps. The next type of bee smell that I'll talk about is queen essence. And I have never done this, but I wanted to mention it in case anyone wants to pursue this. Some beekeepers claim success in making a queen essence tincture. Basically what they'll do is if they pinch a queen to replace her or they find a dead queen or what have you, they will collect that queen and save her and put her in a bottle of vodka or pure grain alcohol and sort of make a vanilla extract, but with queens. The thought behind it is that queen pheromone will help to attract scout bees to this swarm trap. Again, I've never tried that, but I wanted to list it as a possibility in case anyone out there wants to pursue that. The next bee smell I wanna talk about is dead bees. Um, obviously, if a swarm is moving into a cavity that has had a dead out in it, there's very likely to be dead bees in that cavity. So I believe that that does add some attraction to the, your swarm trap. Now, if you have dead bees that are dead because of disease or some unknown reason, uh, you don't want to spread disease by doing this. So I've actually got some dead bees here that I have saved. Uh, these are from a split that I made that failed and then got robbed out. So the way that I would use these is just take the wax and dead bees and just sprinkle a few on the bottom board. Pretty simple, but I do think it adds a, a layer of attraction to this swarm trap. So the final bee smell I wanna talk about is Nazanov pheromone. And this is something that is produced by the bees. The bees have a Nazanov gland at the very tip of their tail. And if you're a beekeeper and you've noticed bees at the entrance, um, they'll stick their abdomen up in the air and then point the tip of their tail down. And that exposes the Nazanov gland. It produces a very lemony scent that's pleasing. It smells really good actually. And I'm not an expert in bee pheromone by any means, but the research is indicating that that is a way for them to communicate with each other. And it is basically a flashing neon sign that says, come here, come here. The very powerful thing about Nazanov in the application of swarm trapping is Nazanov can be replicated pretty closely with lemongrass oil. So I've got a bottle of lemongrass oil here. This is four ounces. It costs about $15 or so, and it is pretty easy to use. Um, there are other things though that will replicate that smell. The biggest and best known is probably Swarm Commander. And lemongrass oil and swarm commander are both used religiously by people who are very successful in swarm trapping. Um, last year I caught seven swarms using swarm commander. This year I am going to try lemongrass oil and see which I like better. So now I'm gonna put one of these traps together the way that I plan to use them this year and talk a little bit more about that. So I'm starting with a box that's either been lived in by bees or I'm painting the inside with beeswax. And I've got a few dead bees on the bottom, that's optional. Old brood comb, very helpful. And I've got that in the bottom there. Then I'll put my frames in. Again, these are heavily waxed black plastic foundation. I've got one frame of honeycomb in the center. Now what I did last year using Swarm Commander is I would take a Q-tip and I'd get the Swarm Commander on the Q-tip, lay it on the top bar
seal the hive, put it in the tree, and then I'd take a shot of Swarm Commander right at the entrance. And that's all I did. Swarm Commander and Lemongrass Oil have a shelf life. Uh, once they're on that Q-tip, once they're on the entrance, they will fade over time and become less attractive to scout bees. So what I did to combat that is every week when I checked my traps, I would take my Swarm Commander and put a spritz on the entrance. Now I'm using my truck to back up to the trees and I'm putting my Swarm Traps eight or 10 foot up in the air. So I found that this spray bottle was pretty handy because I could actually jump and spray at the top of my jump and not have to back my truck up or take a step ladder or anything like that. The problem with lemongrass oil or Swarm Commander for me is if I want to freshen the lure on the inside of the hive, I've got to back my truck up or get a ladder out. I've got to undo the ratchet strap holding this together, pull the lid, freshen the lure, and then put everything back together. So this has led me to want to experiment with a different lure this year, and that is Man Lake's Swarm Lure. Comes in this envelope. There are two vials in here, and it's, it smells very much like lemongrass. It mimics that Nazanoff pheromone, but it's a slow release. It's a time release. In fact, it's supposed to last about three months before the smell is completely gone. So what I can do with this is I can pull some frames out. I can put this on the back of the hive. And just staple it in place. Then put my trap back together. Now with that lure on the inside and regularly freshening the lemongrass oil or swarm commander on the outside, I feel like I've got a pretty good bait solution here. Guys, I'll say one more thing on lemongrass oil and swarm commander. I have personal experience with Swarm Commander. I know that it works, but it's pretty pricey for the amount that you get. Lemongrass oil is quite a bit cheaper, so I am experimenting with both of these this year. I plan to try the Man Lake trap with lemongrass oil on one series of traps and then Swarm Commander on another series of traps. And I'll post the results throughout the swarm season in a weekly swarm check series that I do. So if you want to catch that, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you can follow along with the success or failure of my swarm season. So to sum up swarm trap baiting, the more bee smell you've got in the box, I think the, the better off you are. I like to use dead bees, wax, old brood comb if you've got it, some honeycomb if you've got it. Uh, definitely use some swarm commander, lemongrass oil, or the Man Lake swarm lure, something that mimics that Nazanov gland and then get your traps in the right place. And location will be the next video in this series. That, that will be a pretty in-depth video. So again, if you want to catch that, hit the subscribe button. Guys, I really hope that you found this video helpful. My goal with this series is to help people catch swarms. You know, packages are expensive, nukes are expensive, and sometimes catching a swarm versus making a purchase might make the decision for someone to get into beekeeping or not get into beekeeping. And I am very much in favor of making more beekeepers. That's one of the main goals I've got for this channel is to help people get into beekeeping and be successful at it. So if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. That will get it out to other beekeepers and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Until next time.